Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Lower Level Podcast, where anything goes. Uh, we might talk Star Wars. We might talk Disney. We might talk whatever. Um, joining me, which was honestly, I think to this day, with the exception of the Je- Jedi Talk podcast we just did, um, my favorite episode of all time was the one that you and me did that I had to take down for reasons unexplained. Um, but uh, joining me is my good friend, Kevin Kevin C's Lagoon, uh, married to chaos. You know him from all that stuff. Welcome to the show, Kevin. What's up, brother? How's it What's going? What's up? Buddy? Doing good. Am I? Yes. Are you doing good? I don't even know anymore. What it's like day day forty one going into forty two, something like that. I don't know. Something like that. We're twenty two minutes away from day whatever. I have my little snowman who's counting down in the living room because all of this happened before I could even take my Christmas tree down. Really? Yeah, that's a that's a legit story. Wait, 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 wait. You hadn't taken your Christmas tree down when you got into quarantine? Yeah, no. In fact, that was one of the first things we did. That was like <laughs> our first uh, weekend activity. <laughs> you are from Alabama, you son of a bitch. Uh, no, because I actually believe that there's real shit in this world that can kill you. So, <laughs> so how's this all going for you guys? Are you guys holding holding together all right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think we've definitely learned the limitations of our family bonds, um, marriages. You know, uh, any any hint of ever wanting to have more kids, which Heather had. Uh, expressed in in the recent past uh, i believe that is effectively squashed so uh yeah you know um that's good uh i, I, I mean <laughs> like dude i'm so brain dead like these days that um hell man i don't know what it's like to speak to someone outside of this house honestly Yeah, man, it's the uh, you guys are going to hear weird sound here because I am in the garage and the to, to be able to because I have my family's here. So like everybody's here, kids, my parents, everybody's here. So in the in ability to try to do this podcast, I'm out in the garage. And so you can hear the garage. I'm sorry, not the garage. I was gonna say the garage door opener. You can hear the air conditioning unit. So I'm trying to like work the board and talk and it's very hard (laughs) it's very (laughs) hard um so bear with me if you hear like weird pauses i'll try to clean it up in in the in the show but like it's just a pain to hear that droning sound when someone's trying to talk so i'm trying to limit that so if you hear weird pauses that's what that is i apologize in advance but just a heads up that's (laughs) it's not cold out tonight so i had to do it that way but yeah man i've noticed that like even my interactions with people when i'm out has gotten weird it's gotten like it's gotten like to the point where you're like, you try to be nice because I remember when this first happened, it kind of started to feel like nine 11 hat like did when everyone was like over the top, nice to each other. And then there was like this breaking point where people were starting to be like, you know what? Uh, yeah, we're still here and I don't really care about you. And (laughs) everyone's just kind of over it at this point too, I think. And so you can tell that like the niceness is starting to fade away, which is kind of disappointing, but it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, uh over on my side of town, that took a deep dive pretty early on um, because my two primary places of shopping are Publix and Sam's Club. Sam's Club, I mean, good God, every, every trip is like a Black Friday. <laughs> um, and, well, I'm not, I'm not going to express that, but there express are... It. Say it. It's lower level there are everyone. there are definite language barriers, but everybody understands when you're like, get the fuck back. Yep, that's um, true. And Sam's seems to be the worst case, uh, you know, of what I've had to deal with repeatedly, just because you have you have all this open space in a in a club in a club warehouse, and yet everybody is still just I don't know face coverings. Although beneficial, I suppose, the once the face coverings became like highly recommended, everybody became a lot more ballsy. Um, 
almost as if like they were untouchable now, you know, and, and like the actual six foot rule was out the window. Um, but Publix is actually where I've had my, I would say most aggressive um, interaction with a guy who just blatantly didn't care about anybody. And so leave it to me to be the voice of the people. <laughs> and I straight called him out because uh, he, he shoved past us and, and another guy on an aisle and then was going the wrong way down an aisle. And, you know, I hate that down the aisle thing. It's so stupid. It, it doesn't make any sense. But A, because no one follows it. It's not something you're used to seeing. So like it's, it, it, and it's not something where it's like, it's just on the ground. I don't look at the ground when I walk. I didn't see it the first three or four aisles I was in. And then someone yeah, pointed yeah. it out and they're like, you're going up the wrong way. And I was like, what? I was like, what are we in traffic? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but it's dumb because like, it's, because they're, they're going to go down the aisle either way and they're going to touch whatever's there. It, it just, it's one of those things where it's like, I get the intent behind it, but it doesn't really yeah. work for a many, many reasons. It, 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 if they're going to do it, because I think if it was executed properly, it would be it would be very effective at you know what their intent is but you have to have some employee manager something that is actually policing and coordinating you know directing controlling those crowds and that traffic flow um yeah when we were in there earlier tonight which i mean we go down to 192 because it's it's simply less crowded uh because tourist district and nobody's you know nobody's there um, the, the first yeah, weekend, my, my weekend, Walmart is a, is a, is a, um, tourist Walmart. So it, there's been no one there. It's been great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, um, and the stock seems to be better, obviously. Um, you know, except for those in the know, uh, the first time we found toilet paper was Publix down by animal kingdom, you know, um, that's been about a month ago. And that was when there was none to be had. And, uh, I put out an alert on Twitter and, uh, for anybody who was willing to drive all the way down there, but it's, uh, yeah. If management were more proactive, I think it would be more effective. Uh, the day that I had an, inter uh, I call it an interaction and altercation. It was, um, when they had like big signs hanging up on the end caps at the beginning of, you know, all the aisles on both sides telling you do not go this way. I mean, it was pretty in your face. Um, and everybody was following it except for this one person case in point. Uh, hey, Hey, you know, but hang, on, hang, hang on a second. Yeah. Stop, stop where you're at. This thing is like, it's, it's freaking out over here. I mean, let me call you right back in a second. Yeah, that's cool. I'm, I'm going to stop the recording. Just remember where you were at because this is good. I want to get to it. I just, this thing is not working right. Okay. <sighs> Fucking thing. Hang on. I'll, I'll call you back in a minute. All right. It's so before we get back with Kevin while I'm waiting for this to come up. I don't think I introduced myself. If you've never listened to the show before, hello. My name is Brad Hughes. I'm the host of this podcast, Jedi Talk and Park Views with Brad Hughes, the podcast and the YouTube channel. Um, and we're getting Kevin back now. I don't know what was going on with my computer. It was like, for some reason, in a he'll hear this now i'm getting electrocuted um by my microphone i don't know what's going on um but my microphone is like legitimately electrocuting me as i'm talking into it if i get too close to it it stinks it like stings me and i think it's time for a new microphone can you hear me okay yeah yeah yeah, cool. yeah. i just want to make sure i was telling i introduced myself because i forgot to when we were talking because that's just kind of how i roll um <laughs> so Publix, dude pushes in front of you well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just like that kind I, of behavior is just really insane to me because, like, it's not just it's, it's not like you're sick. You know what I mean? It's it, the entire world is having a problem, and you're just being Captain Douchebag. And it's yeah, just it, my thing is it sh like that shows me that I could never be friends with that guy. Like you're you're no. such a giant pussy that you can't even keep it together in the grocery store during some time when people when some people got kind of sick. Well, and that's the thing. It's, you know, I can almost understand now. Today was the first time I've noticed where they had the decals on the actual floor. Um, and they are, they are not as 
as noticeable. You know, they're, they're easily overlooked. So I saw a lot more people going the wrong way up the aisle and stuff. And of course, I mean, I'm just having to kind of stay back and let them do their thing. You know, there was one lady today um, who uh, we were exiting an aisle and she came pushing right, you know, right past going the wrong way. And I was like, excuse me, ma'am, ma'am, you know, and, and her college age, you know, maybe late high school uh, sons spoke up. They're like, you know, mom, mom. Yeah. Yeah. And she was like, Oh, I'm not supposed to be going this way. And they're like, no, you know, and I have a face covering on, uh, which I, I, we don't have any face masks. So we've just been having to kind of, you know, wrap our heads like we're in the Sahara and, um, <laughs> Like you're in a gang. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much, you know. <laughs> Freaking, uh, you know, bring, oh, God. Wow. See, I lost my thought. I'm not used to thinking now. I was going to try and make a reference, and now I can't even think of who the who the uh, band was. From the 90s, Insane in the Membrane. and uh, Insane in the Brain. C- Cypress Hill. Cypress Hill. Cypress Hill. Yep. Hill. Yeah. It's, uh, but, um, you know, so anybody that knows me when there's true emotion there, there's no hiding that there is zero filter. Um, it's true. I've seen you get very upset about barbecue. It's <laughs> <laughs> you've never seen the true. That's what's scary. It's like, I, I've seen you like vaguely upset, but I've heard that like <laughs> DEF CON level five is very scary, which is how I am when I get upset about or passionate about something. <laughs> it's there's no apologies no, yeah 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 there, there's no doubt um That's as funny. heather says my, my like she knows when when somebody has pissed me off because as she puts it like my lips just disappear and it turns into almost like a i've a, seen that face like a cart like a cartoon character it's just a straight line it where my mouth like used to be sucked on like 78 warheads <laughs> right that's what it looks like <laughs> That's what it looks like. Yeah, man, I don't know. I just, I get the people like early on, like I think, I just don't get, here's the thing that makes me laugh the hardest is I've seen a lot of people give people like flack about like, oh, you're profiting during this pandemic. And meanwhile, as they're saying that, they're watching the news, (laughs) which is people getting paid. You know what I mean? Like covering the pandemic. Like when, I remember when YouTube demonetized a bunch of videos because I had like, covid in like the tags or like the title of the video yep. and yep. then yep. it was like meanwhile the news is just like blasting it every it's just so hypocritical but they did they did um repeal that yeah it took about a week or two but yeah it, yeah. it, it took some yeah. time but it was just it's just odd like it's 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 unpre- i mean this is you know, this is a bunch of no duh shit i'm saying it's very this is an unprecedented time but like the the thing that that annoys me are the people who go out that are like overly cautious but then do the wrong shit while they're overly cautious like for example i was in walmart the other day and i saw a woman with gloves a, a mask on and then like a clear welder's mask right but she's holding her cell phone with the glove and uh-huh. and is wiping sweat away from her face underneath the shield oh my i'm God. like you just defeated the entire purpose of everything you were doing. Also, that, who yeah, the fuck yeah. gets a welder shield? You know what I mean? Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, so you mean it wasn't getting like through this baby? It was like a sh- like a think about like a um like a welder. It was mask. like, but it was, it was like American Chopper style. But it was cl- I don't know, but it was just like a fa- a fold down. <laughs> Like welder's mask, it like flips down, and then it's like the, yeah. the mat, but it was clear, like like clear plastic. So fucking stupid. See, and at, at the least same be consistently time, stupid, dude. Well, hey, you know that's kind of uh, truthfully that 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 that's like a, a a moment in my shoes daily, even when the world isn't in chaos, um, because. God, it, it annoys Heather to death. I am such a thorough human being at, at least I tried to be. And like, 
I'm always, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's being on my second marriage. Maybe it is just having a bad childhood. I don't know, but I see all, I see every angle that can possibly go wrong, you know, and, and I counter it at every opportunity and the level of the level of prep it's exhausting going to the grocery store for me like but at this and, and we started off and heather was like god you're being paranoid this is stupid this is ridiculous yada 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 it's not worth this and always through this whole situation about 10 to 14 days later it becomes a new cdc recommendation I'm like, see, motherfuckers, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not crazy. Maybe I'm just more aware, you know? He's not crazy. Maybe. He's a trendsetter. <laughs> <laughs> An unsponsored, underpaid trendsetter. <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah, I mean, but like, you know, I'm encouraged by seeing people that are taking efforts, but yeah, no, at the same time, it's like, yeah, uh, curbside pickup associates nine times out of ten really frustrate me because it's like <laughs> I had one at Chick Fil A that annoyed me to no end. <laughs> it, like he wasn't wearing gloves and was like, <sighs> I go to grab that back. He's like, No, 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 from the side. And I'm like, If I touch the, bo- it's the bottom of the bag. Yeah, I'm not touching your hand. <laughs> <laughs> like I know your manager told you to like give it to me and make me make sure I take it this way, but I promise you, I I'm further away from your hand if I grab it on the bottom. He he pulled it back away from me. He goes, no, grab the side. And I was like, what? <laughs> I looked at him. I was like, what? He's like, grab your side. And I was like, I can't grab the bottom. He goes, no. And I was like, you realize my hand's closer to your hand at the top, right? Also, you're not wearing a glove or a mask, right? Yep. Yep. So shut like it's just the the weird shit that people get picky about is just so odd to me. I I truly don't understand it. I really really don't. Well, well, okay. A couple of days ago, had to go do a curbside pickup at at a couple of places. Um, one being Staples, and I hung a sign. We took the van. I hung a sign on the headrest. It's right there at eye level that said, please place the items in in the box and do not close the trunk. I will do it after you have distanced yourself because I can do it remotely. And here's the thing, like (laughs) that's sanitized. And here's the thing, whatever dumbass wants to go ahead and close the trunk, even with the sign looking him straight in the face, (laughs) I can forgive that level of well, I can I can sanitize those, those those trunk handles again. That's not the issue. It's the fact that the sign was right there, <laughs> literally in your face. <sighs> and as I'm telling you, don't touch the trunk, don't touch the trunk. And he still grabs it and lowers it like he's being all helpful and stuff. <sighs> I don't know. That that's just a that's just a display under unique circumstances of where this particular person is probably endangering self every time he walks through a parking lot because he lacks awareness, Yeah, man. you know, and that, that I cannot tolerate. I have zero tolerance for just these head in the cloud people, but that's every day of the week. That's not just, you know, yeah. You know, during, during this uh, pandemic. It's, like, it's like Bill Burr eloquently put, there's just a bunch of in the way people walking around looking up at shit. Yeah. It's, it's, well, yeah, that's every day. That's every day at the park, isn't it? <laughs> it's the worst. I miss <laughs> Disney so much, dude. This is by <laughs> far the longest stretch I've, I've ever gone without going to a theme park since I lived here. It's, uh, I it's, believe that. Yeah. It's weird, yeah. man. I mean, I'm always there. I mean, I, after work every day, I'm, I'm there pretty much every day, especially since Galaxy's Edge opened. Um, but it's weird, man. Like I drove through property. I've done it twice now and it's just this weird, like my, my weirdness with this whole thing is like people are acting like instead of getting a aggressive flu that 
the second you get coronavirus, then your your organs liquefy and you turn to dust and that's the end. Like people like I thought for sure there'd be like bloggers and vloggers and stuff out there like taking photos. There wasn't anybody, dude. No one. I drove by well, but Oh go ahead. No, go ahead. They were early on. Oh really? But I think spokesman, you know, proved that lesson. What happened with him? I mean I don't like that guy, by Did the way. He's a, Well, no, nobody nobody does. He's but, a massive cock. Um, and ironically doesn't have a massive cock. Did you really miss that? Yeah, dude, I don't I I'm I think he blocked me cuz I was talking shit to him at one point. No, no, no. Oh, oh no. Other people were sharing clips. No, dude. I, yeah, anything he, with anything with his name in it, I just I avoid cuz I think he's such a tool bag. And that's coming from yeah, somebody who's, was, a, who's an asshole, so take that with a grain of salt. And, yeah, I mean, I I know I know the accusations and you well, know. Dude, accusations don't mean shit to me. I, I've, no, I've they been, don't. I have accusations against me, and it's not true. And it just anybody, yeah, anybody can yeah. say I could say right now that you you raped me, you know, a few weeks ago. And and if people choose to believe me over you, then that's what the the reality is. So right. I, I, right. I don't I don't I just think he himself is a douchebag. Uh, I had a, I had a a. a interaction with him one time remember the video i posted a few years ago about the fourth of july thing where that woman was in front of the castle what and, okay so i posted a, a video it was a real short video on the fourth of july not july 3rd not july 5th the fourth of july at magic kingdom you know the crowds at fourth of july at magic kingdom it's their second busiest day of the year right so yeah that's why i never go i like i like the madness every once in a while so we, we're walking through it's like our tradition too to go to magic kingdom on the fourth of july so I'm, we're walking through, and I'm doing a video, and like I stand there for about 30 seconds, and there, it's in the back side of the castle. So like if you're looking at the back of the castle from the carousel, but like closer up to like where you actually go into the castle, and they're block people are blocking people's traffic because they're trying to take a picture. Yeah, but that's every day. No, 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 no. Her family members are holding crowds back. Because she wants to get a picture of just herself in front of the castle on the Fourth of July with no one else in the photo, like uh, then you th- they're, they're, then they're, you should have got they have like the group around like the you know like how like Sir Mickey's and like Bippity Boppity kind of fade out into that like back area. They're holding people back so she can get this photo. So I'm in the video and it was just part of my video and I cut it out and I posted it later as a joke. And I was like, see, right. you're part of the problem. And he's like, um, actually, you know, women can take photos in front of the fucking castle. And I was like, no one said they can't take photos in front of the castle, you stupid fuck. The point is that she is holding up traffic on the second busiest day of the year while I'm trying to make a dining reservation so I don't get charged $20 per person for it. Or $10, whatever it is. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. the fact that you don't even get that, like, A, the video clip was posted as a joke in a response to something... I forget. I forget. I forget what the joke was. But like somebody was like, "What's the most annoying thing in the park that ever happened to you?" I I purposely didn't put it in my video because I knew it made me sound like an asshole. But I posted right. it as a response to to a tweet like, uh, "What's one thing that annoys you in the parks?" or something like that. And it was you know blocking everyone's existence so you can get a photo in front of the castle is the wrong move every time. And I will say that to no matter who it is, man, woman, white, black, Asian, potatoes. Have you seen that video? No. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll send it to you. It's a, it's a funny joke if you got the, if you got the reference. <laughs> potatoes, <laughs> potatoes. Um, but yeah, so I thought he was a douche after this. So I don't I don't even know what happened. Like what what happened? And like he's got a lot of followers. So like then everyone just hopped on. Yeah, you're a dick. Ugh. Oh, you're so funny and original. Jump off a boat. How about that? If Hope you, you want jump a picture off like the, that, contem- jump off the contemporary resort. You useless waste of a soul. If you want a picture like that, you need to make an 830 ADR at Royal Table for breakfast. Oh, God. <sighs> I'm all set on that. You know? Yeah. That's yeah. the only, so that you can get in Dude, pre-rope like, drop. Honestly, though, like any day other than that, I get it. Okay? But it's the fucking 4th fourth, fourth of July is just like, just like New Year's. It's the same crowd level. Dude, people still show up at for Hell Week, Christmas to New Year's, and are shocked that it's busy. Oh, I I know that. Why is I everyone mean, here? Because you have off and so do they? Because it's Christmas? Because <laughs> you, you and 100,000 of I, your... 
<laughs> because most of his friends are here. I used to literally tell people, I go, well, I, I would ask them, like, well, why are you guys here? Like, what are you guys doing? Like, oh, we had off of her. They're like, yeah, so does everyone else. Everyone yep. except me, because I'm the lucky person right now <laughs> having to listen to your nonsense. <laughs> oh, man, I'll tell you what, man, I do not miss that job. I do not miss it. I do, do not. I really thought I would. I really thought it was going to bother me. It does not, man. I don't miss it at all. Not even a little bit. And I got out Look, at the perfect dodged. time. I was going to say, you dodged the hell of a <laughs> bullet. Dodged a massive bullet, dude. Whoo. God. Well, we're, yep. we're, we're starting to feel the effects of it, too, at my job now. We were kind of immune for a little bit. And uh, we've got some news today that things are changing a little bit. Um, everything's fine, but pay cuts are kind of going up. They're, they chose to pay cut instead of furlough and fire people. So I give them respect. Well, something is it's also a small nothing. company. So, yeah, it's also a small company. So they have yeah, the freedom yeah. to make those choices. But um, yeah, so, so man, dodge the bullet, dude. I can't. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? I, well, like I just the only man. thing I think about is like child support. Like, could you imagine if that was getting backed up every week now because of this? And like, there's nothing you can do, and there's nothing that they're gonna do for you. <laughs> it's just like, oh my god. Oh. Well, if Alabama and Georgia and uh, Ohio all have their way, then I'm sure you have. Uh, I'm sure you have uh, clients in those states. Are they they're reopening, right? Uh, yeah, Georgia as of today, and um, I think Alabama is next week. Wow! At some point, maybe they reopened. I'm not really sure. I feel like, didn't it's I hear a, Texas reopened too, or is planning an early reopen? Texas reopened restaurants. I do know um, for curbside, but not dine in. I miss restaurants, um, dude. I miss them so bad. Uh, yeah. <sighs> yes. Absolutely. There's a um, sushi spot around here. I don't want to give the name of it up because I don't want to blow it up because enough people are there already and I don't want it to get worse. Um, yeah. Yeah. But that I'm really concerned about because they didn't open during the like quarantine for pickup and delivery. They weren't doing any of that. And that makes me really nervous. And I right. really hope that like some of these, like I don't, I don't, I was thinking about this today. Like think about how many small businesses there are in just Orlando. And then multiply that by the entire country. How is the co- the country going to ensure that these businesses can stay open? There's no way. There's just no way. There is no way. It's um, oh, so sad. And, and and that's one of those. I. You can say hindsight is twenty twenty. You know because it does rain true. You know cliches are rooted in fact. Um. It. I, I, I've said pretty much all along, if this was not an election year, mm-hmm. I believe we would have gotten out ahead of this a lot better than we did. Well, and, and, and um, I don't like to get, well, whoops. I'm, I'm because I don't whoops, know whoops. that, I don't know that our president would have just ignored and tried to dismiss Didn't and he make say it go it was away. A hoax? Yes, he did. He did. Wow, and now fuck? everybody now everybody with a red hat <laughs> believes it. I, uh, and that's what has happened. It's clearly not um, a hoax, you, you fucking idiots. Um, I, well, did you hear <laughs> just yesterday, just yesterday in his press conference. He wants credit for how he, he handled it, right? Is no, it like his no, thing? He, is like, the ratings no, are the best no, they've ever been. No. They beat The Bachelor. No, they beat he the was Bachelor. suggesting. It's the highest ratings of any president ever. People are dying suggest- and you're talking no, about your no. ratings, you fucking twat. Now, check this out. He suggested we should look into injectable disinfectants. No, the fuck he didn't say that. Is that where to all these the memes point- are coming from? Yes, to the point where the CDC... Um, what uh, the God, fuck? CDC, I, know, I know the CDC and Lysol themselves <laughs> came out... <laughs> Having to inform people, do not ingest disinfectants. <laughs> what the fuck is this wrong is here? Really bad. Our president thinks he is like, all you got to do if you want to get rid of corona, COVID-19, you want to get some bleach, get a syringe, 
and inject it right into your bloodstream. You'll be fine. I promise you. <laughs> I've done it. I tested <laughs> negative. I know things about tests. I'm telling you right now. That's the way to go. I'm telling you right now. And I know test. Oh, <sighs> good Lord. He did not say that. Does, okay. Okay. Did he have like a brain well, fart and just because I, I like to play devil's advocate? Okay, I, I don't defend him. He's he's a fucking idiot. Okay, and, and and he he'd be an idiot if he was wearing a red tie or a blue tie. He's not a he's a smart guy when it comes. To, there's a difference between being savvy and being smart, and he falls under the savvy category. He was he was savvy enough to become president and fool people into thinking that he thought that that they thought that he was on their side. So he's savvy. Yep. Doesn't that doesn't yeah. equal intelligence? Did he just mean like? We need to find a, a way to 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 make medicine that acts as a disinfectant, or is he just that fucking dumb? He was talking <laughs> about how. Uh, see, I'm not one to just take a quick clip on social media. Me either, and, because they they do shit out of context all the time. Yes, so I went back and I watched the entire like portion of that press conference. And they were talking about, you know, the effects of uh, UV light as well as um, oh, what, there, there was another third third point that, you know, they were going right? to start. Perhaps. Yeah, I, it, I, I'm really not sure right now because. Uh, but I know the UV light and then he started talking about disinfectants, how it kills, you know, mm-hmm. these these disinfectants, it kills it in a minute. Um, well, first of all, no, that. it doesn't. No, no, Clorox doesn't work that way, and you can't ingest that. <laughs> well, here's the thing: for Spend any, blood for, any be fine. for any virus, the the standard time is it must remain wet for ten minutes. That's what I heard very early on. Wait, 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 wait. And say that again. Wait, say that again. It has to. For, st- for, service has to stay wet for ten minutes. Yes, so, to so, truly dis- disinfect it. So if you run a Lysol wipe over a counter, that surface has to be wet for 10 minutes before that disinfectant takes effect? Supposed to be. Huh. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we should, you know, do a little research on the side. But early on in this... Hey, the show's not about facts, and- okay? There's no facts on the show. This is uninformed nonsense. No, that's American politics. If you're coming, if you're coming to me it's, for your, you know, COVID nineteen <laughs> facts, you're, you're looking in the wrong place. Very <laughs> early on, this was on Good Day Orlando. They had a doctor and talking about the proper way to use hand sanitizer and the proper way to do this and do that. Um, you know, this was within the first week of um, what most of us considered to be the start of our isolation, which was basically when the park shut down. Um, and yeah, he made the point that even using these disinfectants, the surface must remain wet for 10 minutes to truly disinfect and sanitize that surface. And, and that made sense to me because with toilet bowl cleaner, if you just want to clean your toilet bowl, scrub, let it sit for three minutes or or apply, let it sit, you know, scrub, let it sit for three minutes. Then you rinse. Mm -hmm. If you want to disinfect it, you're supposed to allow it to sit for 10 minutes. Hmm. So that totally, so that totally clicked in my brain. I was like, you know, that makes sense. Um, Well, see hand sanitizer is the opposite way because your hands have to be dry before they're, before they are, you know, completely disinfected. So, that's, well, and they have to air dry. Yeah, air dry. Yeah. And in order to truly effectively use hand sanitizer, you have to use enough hand sanitizer to where they're dripping like it was water. Mm-hmm. Just a couple of little and just rub it in. That don't do that don't do shit for you. Nothing. Yeah. Um, it's um, but God. Yeah. I don't want to I don't want to get off on some kind of preachy. This is how you do it. <laughs> It's um, COVID-19 instructions for the for the uh, apocalypse. I don't know, man. Like, I just I just have found that, like, a lot of people that I know have been out as pussies now where it's just like, OK, you're a coward. I can't I can't roll with you. Anymore. Been, like you, you're have, you're have a been, giant pussy. Have been what? Out as pussies. Like, I just like I have friends now that have like 
are you? I bought fifty things of toilet paper, and I'm just like, all right, well, we're not friends anymore, like, because you're a coward. <laughs> no, I'm serious, dude. Like, I, this it sounds like I'm joking around. I'm not. Like, like, this is the opposite of this. But like, I remember a few days into the quarantine, um, Matt Parrish from Wedway Radio texted me, name drop, and uh, he he was like, hey man, I just want to talk and just talk. And he was like, hope you're doing okay. That's the kind of guy who's not out there panic buying shit and letting, like if you're that inconsiderate like I can't roll with you man like well and you know what I mean like that, I just yeah, just people yeah. That, that you just now go oh I see who you are when things get tough you're a coward well you know we have a we have a that doesn't we mean, have a household I want I want hang on I want to I want to clarify that doesn't mean be reckless yeah 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 that doesn't mean oh like right. just go do what you want to do no I'm talking about like selfishness and and cowardice those are two very different things than you know than you know yep. being like i'm just gonna do whatever i want to do fuck that i don't i don't wear a mask i'm not a pussy that's not what i'm talking about i'm right, talking about right. like being the guy who goes and buys every bottle of hand sanitizer because it's there to fuck other people over i i, I just i i know I've, i have friends that have done that with like i bought 60 rolls of toilet paper like for what like what are you doing with that like it's it's just very weird to me and I won't be you know, with, I'm not friends with them anymore. With with the whole toilet paper thing, I buy the standard at Sam's, you know, the standard bulk members mark, you know, premium toilet paper. Yeah. And that last our household, which is five of us full time, that lasts us and two. Four months. of the five are chicks. So they're using more than, yes. than dudes do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm a I'm a lone wolf in this house. I feel so bad for you. Is that why you're wearing a pink shirt? Because you're gay now? That's not pink. It looks pink in the in the in the picture. No, that 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 is a faded manhood. So. <laughs> it was red, but now it, you're a vagina. So it's pink <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the um, but that always lasts us like two months, and it just so happens that my last trip to Sam's that included that was in late January. Hmm. So guess what, folks? As soon as the shit hit the fan, we had nothing to wipe it with. <laughs> So, but you like, know, but is that the worst the scenario of, in, in a quarantine is, is when you have running water, is that the yeah. worst scenario you could run into? No, no. Like you could lose, no. you could lose power. You could lose. Like I was actually concerned that like the grid was going to shut down for a minute because I listened to Joe Rogan and he, he said it once and I was like, Oh, what if, he, what if he's right? Like what if, what if that does happen? And like the grid shuts down, then, then we're fucked. Then you're gonna see people looting and and, whew. I I literally, dude, almost bought a gun. I'm so the serious. My, the the thought crossed my mind. I don't even like guns. The, I'm not anti gun or pro gun. They're just not for me. It's kind of how I look at it. It's like yellow cars. Yeah. They're just not for me. Um, but I just I was like, yeah, if this shit gets crazier, this is gonna be. You know, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Well, and with the panic level that was there early on. That's where I got um, scared was the, the franticness yeah. you could see in the store as people frantically just like. I literally saw a woman walk up to the, I don't know why, but it was bread and just like dump bread. I'm like, you realize that's like, unless you're feeding a hundred children, like that's not going to last. Like if you if you were doing canned things, I would understand it. Well, and, and, you know, even canned goods, not in the main grocery stores, apparently, but at Sam's, like it was several weeks before I could find green beans, sweet corn, stuff like that. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. Um, I mean, we went the first, we went, we made it the first which Sam's, two which weeks. Which Sam's are you going to? You go to the one? It's in a Coe. Like, that's me? Oh, okay. No, it's in a Coe on, on West Colonial. Gotcha. And um, Highway 50, whatever. They, uh, yeah, um, I mean, like, that first weekend, because I heard about all the trouble taking place in Washington and California with regard to this. You know, there were some little homemade vids on Twitter and stuff, you know, showing the Costco openings and everything. I'm like, well, yeah, that's because they are under fire out there. Like, we didn't even have a case in Central Florida yet. 
And then Heather happened to mention to me, she was like, uh, we need toilet paper. I'm like, yeah, yeah, we'll get it this weekend. I had no idea how bad it was. And I'm, I'm usually pretty good about being aware of what's taking place. Mm -hmm. It completely caught me off guard. So I, I was fortunate. I found a 12 pack of Kleenex boxes at Sam's, but you, you've got like 60 little dainty, you know, tissues in each box, five of us. And I mean, I think that lasted us a couple of weeks, two and a half weeks or something. And then I managed to find some at Publix down on 192. And then like a week later, uh, I hung around for a couple hours in Sam's. And I was about to go ahead and leave. I had a bunch of stuff, you know, food and what have you. And they just happened to bring another pallet out while I was there. And I, and I snagged some toilet paper. And so it was like, boom, now we're good. Wow. You know, but then again, that's, I mean, that's been about a month ago now. So, I mean, that's you know, crazy, we're, dude. we're good for about another three weeks. And then it's like, God, am I going to have to go through this again? No, it's dude. like every there's, time there's, I go there's to stuff, a, there's stuff available. I mean, I, I check every time I go to the store, what we've been doing since it's just me and Holly and then you know, the kids, um, sometimes, and yeah. oh my god, there's a roach on the on the ceiling. That is so gross. This is what sucks about doing this outside in the garage. There's like a massive cockroach above my head. Uh, <laughs> I hope it doesn't fall on me. It's a it's a palmetto. Uh, oh, it's so nasty. Um, I always check and just see because what we've been doing is like we've been doing like project cooking is what I'm calling it, where it's like yeah. well, we'll find something and we'll go okay, what do we need for this? Okay, let's run and go grab that and then come back and make yeah. it. Uh, one of the things we've done that with was I made homemade cinnamon rolls, which has been fun. I've, I've learned like basic stuff that I didn't know how to make. Uh, banana cinnamon rolls that were really good. And then I'm also doing this week the Disneyland recipe for the Monte Cristo, um, which is going to be really exciting because I love the Monte Cristo from Disneyland's Blue Bayou. Oh, my God. Oh, it's so good. Um, <laughs> I love Monte Cristo's. I'm fat. But I haven't done it this week because I've been on a diet this week, and it's it's going good. I'm, I've lost some weight. Uh, oh, okay. It's good times. I think you're the only one that's losing weight in all of this. <laughs> I, I bought a kettlebell before the quarantine hit, too. Oh, it's not a cockroach. It's a grasshopper. Sorry. This thing is freaking out. It's right over my head. I wish I had a picture of it, <laughs> but it's going the other direction now, so I think I'm okay. Um, Yeah, I bought a kettlebell before this because, dude, his, if you guys don't know me, you've seen pictures of me on Twitter or whatever. Uh, or watch YouTube videos. I'm a, I'm not a small guy. I'm a, I'm I'm a, I'm a bigger dude, but I didn't used to be. I used to be a cage fighter, and I used to be in really really good shape. I used to fight. I used to cut down to 185 to fight, and I'm not that dude anymore. But I still have that like weird exercise thing where I can't just start slowly. <laughs> like if I if I'm gonna do an exercise, like I just go 150 percent, and then I burn my body out, and I'm sore for two weeks. And and I and I keep going there. But this during the quarantine, I've actually been doing good. I've been like looking up actual kettlebell exercises to do to do this with, because I, I don't want to hurt myself <laughs> while I'm in quarantine. And uh, right. And I, I'm trying to do it right this time. And it's it's I have the time to do it right. Like the, like nothing's happening. Like we we're we're bored to death. So like I take walks. <laughs> I, I try to be. I try to move as much as I possibly can. I don't know why I started talking about this, but like I just the roach is back. Oh God. This well, is the this is well, the roach saga, bro. <laughs> the back. what? The roach is back. <laughs> it's so nasty. It is a roach. I was wrong. I thought it was a grasshopper. It's not. It's a full how does a, roach. How, oh. how does a roach look like a grasshopper? Because I saw its back legs and I thought maybe it was a shadow of its body, and it's not. It's 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 right it's right above my head. If this thing falls down on me, I'm going to freak out. <laughs> <laughs> Go away. No, Go away. No, I need to. Uh, have you been doing I've anything? Been, have, you, have you learned anything like since you've been doing this? Like anything you've always like wanted to do that like now you have the time or any, any movies or anything like that you've been. Dude, no, that's the thing, man, is. I'm my my goal is to return to my Shanti workouts on Monday. 
What is Sean? Because to you? I feel like I've had a freaking project every every week since this all began. You know, like the first week, it was like, my God, I, we got to find something to wipe our ass with. <laughs> you know, um, shit and then the shower, after that, bro. that's all you need to do. Shit the shower, <laughs> fine. <laughs> I mean, you know, hell. Full disclosure, man, I'm down to like every other day on a shower. Like, really? Oh, dude, not me. I still shower three times a day because I'm a neat. I, I hate, I hate being gross. Today was the longest since I've been an adult that I didn't shower from the time I woke up. I woke up at. 7 30 and i didn't shower until four o'clock this afternoon and i felt like a homeless person the entire time like i could never be homeless like i just i that that gross feeling i just can't plus my hair is a disaster and it's all well, greasy looking say, after three minutes of being out because it's so friggin' long yeah you've got you've got you've got on a good day you've got a lot more hair than i do and you got <laughs> your beard you know I started um, doing a quarantine beard and gave up very quickly because it just got too much. It was it was too aggressive. I think I found a good medium now. Well, as you can as you can see, I told you I can't grow shit. Yeah, you got so. that like Kevin Federline chin strap going on. It looks real good. <laughs> you got that with arms wide open goatee. Where's the arms wide open? Kevin's got a goatee. And the cockroach is coming back to me. It's what the back. hell does Creed have to do with this? What? I don't know. He looked like Scott Stapp. Didn't he have like a, oh, maybe he had a soul patch. I don't uh, know. That I, even if he doesn't have it, even, even if he has it, I, do, I just don't. associate it with him because he's such a douche. Oh, I was going <laughs> to say, don't tell me you're a freaking Creed fan. My man. dad is a massive Creed fan. And so oh, and I, wears a Creed t shirt from a concert he went to. And like ninety nine, still to this day. Well, yeah, because their We're career was over. Wide open, under all sunlight. Welcome to this place. There's a roach right over me. He's back. <laughs> the roach is back. That roach don't give a damn about you, man. He does. He's trying care. to isolate. He's trying to get. He's he's at least six feet away. I'll give him that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm a roach. I can survive a nuclear test, man. I'm scared like, of fucking COVID nineteen. He's like, I've got, I've got COVID twenty three in me right now. You don't even understand. <laughs> oh, speaking of twenty three, dude, did you watch the doc yet? What? Which one? The I'm Michael assuming it's related. Oh, <coughs> yeah. I gotta watch it. I want it. Is it? Is it good? Is it good? Dude, it's a, it's freaking amazing. I mean, but, but again, 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 you know, I, this may come as a shock to you, but I do have just a couple of years on you in, in, in age. By a couple, and, you mean um, 27 years? Not quite that many. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what, you, you're what, you're what, 31? 31, yes, sir. I'm old now. Yeah, so, God, I'll be, uh, I'll be older than that in July. Yes, I will. <laughs> I'll be older than that. <laughs> How much older? Just no older. That's all you need to know. Old enough is what I used to tell the women down in Key West. Old enough to what? A, old enough to party. That's a super bad. Oh, dude, I love that movie. It's a, How old are you? But, old enough? Old enough for what? Old enough to to party? <laughs> was that really in Super Bad? Yeah, I was making love, dude. I love that what movie. Year did that, what year did that come out? Okay. I don't know for sure, but I'm going to take a guess. I want you to look it up so that way I don't look like a cheater. I'm going to say it came out 2005. Let's see. Oh, you were close. Uh, was it six? Okay, 2007. Seven, really? Yeah. Wow. That's what I'm showing on an initial uh, Google. Wow. That's IMDb. That's official. Yeah, that, 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 that would be right. God, I thought it was earlier than that. And the only reason I thought that because I used to, I used to work at a movie theater, and I remember seeing that movie, but I thought I was like too young to see that movie. I guess I wasn't. Hmm. Well, then good. So that's yet another phrase that I coined. I've never that Hollywood stole from me. <laughs> I've never, I've never laughed that hard in a movie in my entire life. It's the first time I saw that movie. Dude. It's so funny. I haven't I swear, watched it in a was, while, but I wonder, I wonder if it holds up. Because now it's 13 now, uh, years old. <laughs> oh, my God. See, 
No, I'm a little distraught, man. Like this is this is upsetting because I'm on record in 2006 telling tourists in Key West <laughs> that I was when they would ask my age, I'd just be like, old enough. <laughs> old enough and and do you know that in 2004 i coined the phrase spinner spinner chick did you really (laughs) i coined i've got fucking witnesses to that (laughs) that's a weird thing to be proud of (laughs) hey hey (sighs) and then it was like four years later it showed up in entourage that's hilarious HBO show? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's so funny. <laughs> in fact, Spinner. my old roommate in Key West, who who now lives over in uh, Sarasota, um, I even asked him, because I was living in Nashville at the time when I saw the Entourage episode. I texted him. I'm like, dude, you ever heard anybody use the term spinner before me? He was like, actually, no. No, man. You're the only one I've ever, I'm like, I'm watching Entourage on demand right now. And these motherfuckers are talking about a spinner chick while they're on a private jet. Oh, that's the dream, isn't it? <laughs> I actually liked that show. I, I, have, I never watched it. I feel like I would like it a lot. I will tell you, my one of my favorite shows of all time, I always go back and forth between this one and How I Met Your Mother as my all-time favorite show. Um, but Californication was such a a great show for the first See, four seasons. I, I, I never got into that one. Dude, it's, yeah, did you with, did you try did you watch it from the beginning? No, no, that's the thing. Oh, no, I, I'm not real good. If I'm not real good watch, at jumping if, on trends. If you can watch that, especially now, like there's been some distance so like the hype's kind of wore off a little bit. If you can yeah. watch if you can watch that show from the very first episode and not be intrigued with how the fuck that plays out, it's insane. It is such a good show. But I guess the only problem is like it's a little unbelievable. Okay, hang on. It's a lot unbelievable in the final seasons. Like it gets to a ridiculous place. But the yeah. thing is, though, like there are people that live the way that this guy is portrayed to live. So it's not that crazy. It's just not that normal. Like you know, you've heard stories from like the Rolling Stones and you know those those kinds of bands that are like that. Uh, you know, in the heyday of that band, so like yeah. it, it, there's some stuff with 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 a band and a, an artist that's a fictional artist, Atticus Finch, I think is his name, and uh, he Wait, wasn't he wasn't he from To Kill a Mockingbird? To Kill a I don't know, maybe To Kill a Mockingbird, I don't know. I, I feel like that was the name of. Let, let me look. Oh, the the cockroach is flying around right now. That's great. He he flew away. It's all good. I think Atticus Finch was from To Kill a Mockingbird, now that you say that. But uh, I think he was also a name of this rock star character in Californication. Let me double check and see. But I'm telling you, man, if you can, if you can watch that first episode, you know what? I'm going to, you know what? You know what to do? Wait, I'm, I'm wait, gonna, wait, wait, wait. Hold that th- hold real quick because I feel like I'm like Howard Stern's sidekick over here with the freaking <laughs> MacBook. Verifying information. Yes, he was the main character, the lawyer. In To Kill a Mockingbird. Now, type in Atticus Finch, Californication. I want to know what comes up. Who is what? Who is that? He Who's looks like him? Russell Brand, but it's not. But it would have been a great character for Russell Brand to play. <laughs> I was thinking Jared Leto. Yeah, him too. Uh, what is the guy's what name? Is it? That they don't appear to want to tell me. <sighs> Type in rock star character Californication. Wait, Wait Tim Menken? That must, that might be the actor's name. But that's definitely not the name from the character in the show. Australian co- comedian, actor, writer, yeah. musician. He is that. I remember looking him up and I remember finding out that he was like an actual musician. Yeah, he's like Australian British. Yeah, good looking huh. dude. Uh, not in this picture, no. Mm, what? He too is older than you. Well, that's good. That show is so good. <laughs> so I'm going to spoiler alert everybody. If you haven't watched Californication and you and you plan to listen, like skip ahead a minute and a half because I feel like you need to hear this because it's such a good, 
It's such a good. Um, I love Hank Moody. God, he's such a good character. Um, I got. I got. This is driving me nuts. I gotta find the, I gotta find this first. Atticus Fetch. That was his name, Atticus Fetch, not Finch. Fetch. Ah, okay. Okay. Anyway, all right. So, the, here's the premise of the of of the show, the first two seasons. Anyway, ready? So it's this, about this guy who's an author, and he's going through a divorce with his ex wife that he doesn't really want. And they're back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right? But he's like a super, super duper ladies man. And like girls come onto him really easily. And it's like a, it's like his weakness kind of. And um, he he's in a bookstore and he is like this girl's reading his book and like notices that it's him. And he's like being kind of coy about it. And this girl takes him back to her place and they sleep together and while they're hooking up, she punches him in the face, which triggers him to write this next book. But that kind of comes into play later anyway. But but the main character is Hank Moody, played by David Duchovny. And the girl you find out at the end of the episode is an underage daughter of his ex-wife's new boyfriend. <laughs> And she's like 16 years old and he didn't know it and hooked up with his his ex-wife's new boyfriend's underage daughter. And the first two or three seasons is like how that all plays out. It's so intense, dude. It is such a great show. And the way it finally comes to an end is so satisfying. And then that that like kicks off the next few seasons of the show. Dude, it's so good. I'm telling you, man, it's so good. It's See, this so good. A, it's so good. The next time I'm in California, I'm going to where they filmed this because they filmed it in Venice, in Venice Beach, and I'm going to find the yeah. house and take a picture in front of the house that they filmed it as as Hank's apartment because it's 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 seriously one of my favorite shows of all time. It's so good. So this did not have David Duchovny in it. No, no, he's the main guy, David Duchovny. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Hank, his character, his name Hank Moody, sleeps with this character, and then like just a bunch of shit happens afterwards. And I don't want to spoil it because then it would ruin seasons of the show. But really interesting stuff happens with between these two characters, between this whole dynamic of characters. It's it's just kind of crazy. It's really really good show. If you have some time in quarantine, man, they're like twenty two minute episodes. They're not long. You can breeze through it. It's such a great show. See, I had it's no a idea that over it was, the top. It was music it was based, kind of towards the last part. Um, well, that's not true. There's like his best friend's like a huge rock star, and then there's like. Issues with that, and then like it's. Just, I'm telling you, man, it's it's a disaster in the best way. It's one of those shows when I'm by myself. It's like you know, a lot of people like watch Friends, like on repeat, and like that's oh, like yeah. their background noise. When it, it's more graphic than Friends, but like when I'm by myself and I just want background noise, I put on Californication. I think it's on Hulu. Maybe not. I think it, it was on Showtime. So I don't know how it's on Showtime. Whatever Showtime app they have. But I'm telling you, man, it's a great show. It's a good quarantine show. I'm trying to think, that may be that may be if it was Showtime, that may be why I never watched it. It's so good. Like I, I've debated on like buying all the DVDs to have physical copies of them because I love it so much. It's like that and How I Met Your Mother are my two favorite shows of all time for very different reasons. But it's great. Yeah. Man. See, I, I've had. <sighs> I've been trying to finish Cheers. I'm finally about almost midway through season 11. I've been working on that since last summer. And then I, I knocked out Ozark because Ozark season three kicked off right after we all uh, went into quarantine. I watched the first episode of Ozark and I was like, oh, so it's Breaking Bad. Oh. And I wasn't interested. No, no. It, it, I, I will... It does have a slow start, but once it ramps up, the, I I think like so many Netflix shows, the first season is the worst season, you know? Yeah. But there's something about Jason Bateman, uh, all of the characters that he takes on, where it allowed me to kind of stay on and give it a, give it a chance, mm -hmm. you know? Um, because, I mean, Jason Bateman, you know, as far as even though he's considerably older than I am, as far as I know, um, I feel like he's the comeback kid of like 
my generation's actors, like my childhood actors, you know? He's so talented, um, dude. He's so good. Name a bad... Well, prof- have you ever seen Extract? No. Uh-uh. Oh, dude. I love that movie. It's like a small indie film, and it's based, yeah. on, it's based on these characters. I believe Mila Kunis is in this. Look this up. I think this came out in like 2000... I want to say like 2009, 10, something like that. But it's, a, it's literally about this guy who works at a, a vanilla extra, like an extract company. And it's just, his shit goes crazy. It's such a good movie. 2009. 2009, yep. Um, yep. I'm usually pretty decent with movie dates. That Although Super Bad was, was wrong. Um, it's so good, dude. It's such a good movie. If you can find it anywhere, I would highly recommend the movie. It's so much fun. I had no idea it was going to be that crazy. Well, Mike Judge was mm-hmm. a producer on it. Yep. So. There you go. Seal of approval. Mike Judge is the man. It's a great movie. Mila Kunis is in it, right? Am I crazy? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah it's a good movie, man. Speaking of Netflix yeah. shows, did you watch Haunting, uh, The Haunting of Hill House? Drop, that was one of the. Get off this call right now. <laughs> <laughs> and go watch it because I'm. They're gonna do a house at at, at horror nights. Are we even it's going like, to have a horror nights at yes, this point? Absolutely, they're still doing construction on all the houses. You're gonna get a horror nights. It'll probably be it'll be in a different way, with a much less capacity. But yes, you're gonna get. They're not gonna. If they're allowed to open, you're gonna get the horror nights. Hundred percent. Do you? Do you think they would really limit capacity on yes. that? I think if they have to, they're not going to have a choice. Because, with, yeah, but does it really pay for itself without the capacity? With between merch and all that stuff, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Parking, merch, tickets to get in, 100%. And if they have to take just, a loss, they're going to still do it because it's the 30th year, 100%. Well, right, right. But you have to watch that show. I, in my opinion, I think it's the best Netflix show that they've ever done, other than Tiger King, because I love Tiger. I King. I mean, here's the thing. <laughs> I bought a Tiger like, King t-shirt. Isn't it? Isn't it over? Yeah. So it's based on a book, and from yeah. What I, I so understand, I've seen, they, I've seen how it plays out. I've seen the ending. <laughs> doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. The uh, they're they're going to be doing other other seasons of it. Like there's an, there, season two is in production now, and I, it's either based off another book or they're just going to continue. The old storyline. I can't remember which one, but I'm pretty sure it's based on another book by the same author, I believe. And I'm all in, dude. Like, I've been saying since I saw this, I want a Haunting of Hill House house at Horror Nights because they have that partnership with Netflix. I've been saying it all since I saw that Stranger Things house the first year. So good. Well, based <sighs> on what I know, it will probably. It has I haven't been keeping up with HHN um, speculations or updates or any of that because the best source was always the Facebook groups and then even no, that no, became no, no, kind no, no, of no. I got a source became, for you I'll I'll hook you up with Cody. It's a uh, is I would assume that the show building would end up being where they had uh, American Horror Story. Back in uh, 26 and 27. Which was where? It was... What um, was it last year? It it hasn't been anything the past couple of years. Oh, really? Yeah. um, I don't believe... I don't believe it was anything in 28. Because I think they shifted down. It would be basically kind of like right behind Blue Man. And to the... To the left of Rip Ride Rocket. Isn't that so where they did a, the Yeti house last year? No, no, no. That's further back. This is one of the front front ones. Um, oh, okay. In fact, the way you accessed it was you actually went between Minions and the Universal store. And oh, really? That little up. weird al- yeah, alleyway you, thing? Yeah, and then you... Um, <clears throat> then you went back up underneath the queue, mm-hmm. you know, the staircase mm-hmm. for uh Rip Ride Rocket. Um yeah, Rip Ride Rocket. It's uh but that's a really large uh that's a really large um 
Dude, if they stage. do that, I will be the happiest. Dude, I'm telling you, I would do that house every night. I would wait three hours a night. I love that show. I'm not I'm not not a horror guy because I like good stuff and I like obscure weird horror stuff. But I'm like I'm not like a horror nerd. Like if I ever say I'm, right. like, I'm a nerd of something like I'm a Star Wars nerd or a Disney nerd, then like I know what I'm talking about. But I enjoy like there's weird horror movies that I really really love. Like have you ever heard of the VHS movies? The, VHS. It's called VHS and then VHS two. Oh no, no! They no. were on Netflix and they were really, really good. And I, I, it's one of those things where I'd like to see them do something like that, like something more obscure, because it could almost be like an original thing. Um, but you should check those out too; they're really good. But like, I'm not like a, I'm not super, super nerdy like some some people are with with horror. But I'm telling you, man, Hill House, it was one of those shows that like the normal person like me and the horror nerds loved. Like I remember well, Collider they had like they had like Collider is like a big YouTube channel that used to, well used to be a big YouTube channel that did like movie talk and stuff. And they had a, a horror a horror show and like they did like weekly recaps and they're like this show's incredible. It's such a good show, it's just well done. There's not a lot of jump scares, a lot of stuff that you get is psychological, but there are there is one jump scare in the show and it's one of the most t- freaked out times I've ever had in my life. There, there's two moments in that show where I can literally remember my reaction to it as if I'm watching myself experience it. It was this one jump scare that has to do in a car, and then it was this other scene where a character is watching a guy from underneath a dresser, and he sees his feet hovering over the floor, and while he's, his feet are hovering over the floor, he's still using a cane, so the cane hits the ground, I can't explain it, dude. You have to see it in the context of the show. I've never been that freaked out in my life. It's the creepiest shit I've ever seen. And I don't think they can capture that in the horror house, in the, in the, in the, what do you call them? Maze in the mazes. But I think that they can do a lot with making you feel like you're in that house and in that environment, um, in the morgue and stuff, which, which I'm, you got to watch it, dude, especially if, if they are doing a house this year. You have to watch it. Well, and again, I've seen the last few episodes. That's it was crazy. Why would you do that? Because it started <laughs> off um, with Heather and Kylie watching, and I just wasn't buying it in the first couple of episodes, and so I walked away. Oh, you got to stick and then, through. then came back, you know. I feel like I watched the first episode and then walked away for about a week or two. And I was like, you know what? I kind of see what happens. And then two, three, four, I think it's six or seven episodes. And then I watched mm-hmm. literally all of them back to back to back in one night. Well, I mean, that's what happened with me and Stranger Things. I love like, Stranger Things season three. I, I tried to watch during when it first came out. I was like, man, this is this is lame, dude. Yeah. Like, this is not season two no. garbage. I don't like season two. I never finished it. I watched like a wrap up show. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's kind of what uh, um, uh, Sean tweeted about uh, yesterday, a couple of days ago. I don't know. I totally agree with that. You know that it was more successful based on the nostalgia, but then again, I haven't bought into it, so I haven't seen all of it. I just know that for but me... See, but see, here's why I don't buy that. A lot of the kids that really liked that show weren't alive back then, so there's no nostalgia. Right, like, yeah. Nostalgia means that you, you remember it as a better time. Like, I don't say I'm nostalgia for, you know, tiki culture. I just like tiki culture. Nostalgia is a different thing than what people say it is you know what i mean it's all it's, it's like it's like miss 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 misdefined is that a word um but it's just it's 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 the wrong word for what you're feeling you like the aesthetic of the 80s because it's like a novelty more than it is uh the word i just said <laughs> what was the one i just said it's a novelty the as- not not nostalgia there's, there's a difference Because like teenagers, teenagers were into were into Stranger Things. You weren't alive in the eighties. I mean, I was barely alive in the eighties. I was born in eighty nine. Whereas I have vivid memories of the eighties. Well, I wouldn't so. say vivid. 
No, 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 no. <laughs> you have memories. I don't know how vivid no, they they're are. They're pretty... Oh, they're very vivid. Wasn't that when you lived in Key West was like 1986? What? <laughs> 2006. Oh, I was in high school. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was getting over my first divorce. A, oh, I was just about, I, to get, I I was just about, I was just about to get married to the first time for the first time three years later, like an <laughs> idiot. Oh. It's a. Uh, no, man. Like, that's the thing. You know, I've talked to you about, you know, maybe doing some longer term projects that would be based in the 80s because I actually, like, have bona fide memories from it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So many people trying to be experts on something they never experienced blows yeah, my mind. Weird, right. Yeah. Well, I, I guess it's kind of the same thing with Disney fans, right? Like, Disney fans love, like, old Disneyland and they, like, nerd out over it but you were never there like oh dude the worst example of this is horizons all these horizons people who are like it's the greatest ride ever they're 24 years old it's like shut up <laughs> no it wasn't if it was that great people would have wrote it and they weren't so that's why it's gone like enough i'm sure horizons was cool by the way horizons the- Her- horizons in the in the 80s through the mid 90s was very cool very cool but then things started evolving yeah (laughs) you you know from from a tech standpoint um mid 90s is when you know things started uh progressing at a much faster rate and so i mean that's really what i would consider to be the initial you know, the start of the decline and future world being future, you know? Yeah. I mean, well, it's tough. Going- I mean, like, how do you, it was easy to talk about the future in the fifties because you don't really know what that means, but you know, now we see all kinds of, di- like what is technology? I mean, you could be talking about computers, you can be talking about automobiles, you can be talking about anything. Like back then it was just like this weird abstract concept of technology now it's like, what do you mean by technology? Do you mean computers? Do you mean phones? Do you mean yeah? Do you mean you know, ca- like I said, cars? Like what? What are you talking about when you talk about technology? Medicine technology, like medical technology. Like there's so many things that you could say in the realm of technology that it's like it's hard to pin down a thing. That's why I think the best thing they could do for the company, and I don't necessarily agree with it, but is to move away from the idea of a manufacturing type thing for the future and and focus on like characters and stuff and i know that's controversial to say but for them and and the idea of keeping up with the times it's the easiest way to do it unless you do like a retro future thing like disneyland paris did where it's like the jules verne you know steampunk kind of aesthetic short of that like i think that that's the best they the best thing they could do and i don't think that aesthetic works in epcot um, I, uh-huh. I think Guardians is going to be such a great attraction and so innovative in many, many ways. I've heard some things. Um, I don't really want to talk about it yet because I don't know if the people who've told me could get in trouble if I talked about it. But some of the stuff I've seen is is really, really incredible for that attraction. Um, I'm just going to say there's some there's some things I've heard, and I don't, I, don't, I don't know if they're true or not, but there's like these domes that you'll enter, and they're projected domes. So like, Oh, you, using you their mapping technology? Yeah. And you're you're using that, but you're like in this like dome, and like the show is going around you in this like massive. I kind of picture it in my head like in the Star Tunnel on um, Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, but like in all directions around you in crystal clear 4K. I think it's gonna be the best thing that they add to the parks, other than Rise of the Resistance, and, that, and that's above the Millennium Falcon <coughs> ride. I think it's gonna be really, really innovative. I think it's gonna, people are gonna be kind of mind blown by this this attraction. From what I keep hearing, it's gonna be pretty, pretty cool. Well, and that's the thing. Are are you know, with the closures, with the quarantine and the COVID, <clears throat> are there any aspects of that ride that Bobby can roll back the funding on? Or are they too far along to where they are truly committed to the original vision? That one, I think they're probably too far down the road on to change. Now, Tron is one thing that I think you could 
adjust at this point because I drove by to see like how far the progress has gotten on that, and it hasn't gotten very far. Um, it's about the same as it was in February when I left. Yeah, um, but wasn't weren't they moving most of the construction into the uh, attraction building? There's still stuff outside. Like they haven't they haven't they've closed in one side of the building, and it's the park facing side, obviously. Huh. Um, but I don't know. It, it was it was it looked like an abandoned <clears throat> abandoned construction site it was very strange like cranes were still up and like those little lift lift things that get people up to like the third and fourth floor were still up in that position but no one was there but how did how could they honestly afford just from a public interest standpoint to kind of trim the fat so to speak on that attraction when it is supposed to already be what exists in Shanghai. Well, it's a, it's not going to be what exists in, in Shanghai. If you look at the footprint of that attraction over there, it's way bigger and way more elaborate and way more ornate than what we're going to get. And I think they're probably going to scale that back too, because they haven't started the outside, you know, in, in it's full, I, I'm an idiot. So I could be way off on this, but I, yeah. I feel like they're going to, they're just going to make it look like a generic building. I don't think it's going to be that, beautiful curvy shape that you see in the concept art that I think at this point they're probably early on early enough on where they could just make it look like a standard box and <laughs> just kind of get away with it from there and blame it on Corona. Uh, but man, that's a, that's a sucker punch. That's lazy. Yep. But you know, Bob Kopec <laughs> is CEO. So what do you, I don't know what you're expecting. Is he though? <laughs> I mean, I, I read that, that Bob Iger was like, I got this. You know how, dude, talk about being a pussy. Can you imagine, like, you get this new job and you're so incapable of handling yourself that, like, the old guy has to come back and go, all right, move out of the way. I got this. Like, you're the CEO of the Walt Disney Company and you didn't even make, like, a statement anywhere about any of this stuff. Bob Iger had to. That's embarrassing, dude. That's embarrassing. Or... or. Or, I haven't heard this one tossed out. We know how Bobby One has been extending his tenure multiple times in recent years. Yeah, he won't stop doing it. He keeps on. What if this was just his newest angle? No, I don't think you publicly announced that you're stepping down. I thought he got Me Too'd or something because it was... (laughs) It was so quick. <laughs> it was so like, oh, I'm stepping down effective immediately. And I was like, oh, that's not yeah, good. But, <laughs> yeah, but they had soldiers on the ground when all of this was breaking out back in late December, early January. Yeah, so I don't know. They, they, they could foresee the same way banks could where this was heading before anybody, you know, like before our own government was acknowledging it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's... That I've seen that like he responded to somebody saying something like that, like, hey, did you see the writing on the wall and you wanted to step down before it affected your legacy? And he's like, no, of course not. And I'm like, I don't know about that. No, you have just, to know because you, you shut the you shut the China parks down. Yeah. Like you but, have to know no. what, what happened. But see, that's still an honest answer. If if he's like, no, that's not why I stepped down. But the reason I stepped down was here's an opportunity to use this to kind of continue my legacy. This is just another chapter in it. Mm -hmm. I saved the, I saved Disney during the greatest global, you know, pandemic. I read somewhere that they're losing $30 million a day. (laughs) Just, just insane. I can't even fathom how much, like that is insane. Like, I guess, I guess they're, they're not making money, right? Because there's no movies. There's no, there's there's no Dude, parks open like how are they make it Disney Plus is their only revenue stream right now? No, it's not. What's no, their, it's not. What's another revenue? I mean merchandise, but like who's buying that? ABC, Fox, ESPN. Oh Hulu. yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. All the all the. TV that's the channels. question. Yes, it makes for a good headline. We're losing thirty million a day, but the, the but the real question how much is are you making a day on on those exactly. But yeah. are you losing? But like, are you really losing? Like, is it? Is it a gross loss or is like how much are you still profiting? You know? 
Yeah, it's a weird one, man. Do you do you see? I've I've been tossing this around, and this is a scary sentence to even say. I haven't said it on the podcast yet. Do you think there's any chance they don't reopen the parks ever? Ever? Yeah. Well, I, maybe not ever. But do you think do you think there's a chance that this this cl- this closure happens for like a year or more in the parks? It. You know, I and, move back to North Carolina. <laughs> I mean, I think that that could for 2020, I think it could be a possibility. And here's why. We know that. Airborne. These droplets can hang in the air for one to three hours after somebody coughs or sneezes. And you're going to put them on a fucking big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Yeah. Even if you even if you take the time to stage the trains and sanitize each one effectively in between each, you know, to where you're running at half capacity because half your trains have to be brought in and maintenance has to sanitize them, you know, mm-hmm. between each run, you're still running people through a potential COVID cloud. Um I, I don't see Disney from a PR standpoint enforcing face coverings, but even beyond that, you still have all these surfaces that it's impossible to sanitize and maintain sanitation. Are you, I guess the way I would ask the question is, which is Disney more willing to do with what we currently know? Okay, not forecasting improvement or the curve or any of that. But with what we currently know, is Disney more willing to shut down for the rest of the year or are they more willing to impose those restrictions on guests? I would say that they're probably more likely to impose those things on guests because I think a lot of guests are going to do that stuff naturally anyway. I think most but guests. But then you, you go to public. Gonna, but then you go to Publix, and you know that no, they're probably not. Yes, but people at Publix didn't get on a plane and fly down, and spend money, and then like also know that you know what I mean. Like I think there's a lot more at stake when you come down for a vacation, versus going to Publix to pick up some Cheez Its. My my only argument to that is how do you take the people out of the crowds in the state capitol buildings? What do you mean? And have them invest and roll down to Lake Buena Vista and they don't have a Karen syndrome. <laughs> it's too hot for this face mask. It's too hot for yeah. these gloves. That's, but that's the thing, man. Like, you're going to get that. But I, it is private property and they can put any yeah. rules in place they want to put in place. I mean, like, Florida has medical marijuana legal, but you can't bring it on Disney property. You know what I mean? Oh, like, can you not? No, 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 no. It's not allowed. Oh, I, mean, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a big thing about that a few a few years ago. I want to say like two or huh. three years maybe. Right as it first passed, whenever that was. Um, but yeah, there was like a big deal. Like, it doesn't matter if you're on it or not. You can't bring it to Disney property. Um, so I don't know, man. It's, it's uh, is it? I always look at it like in the most simplest terms because that's just kind of the person I am. I'm not the brightest, but, but I look at it like a, like a, like a, like a car after a car accident. Like you, you get your car totaled, you know, is it worth it to Disney to just let the parks division go at a certain point? You know what I mean? Like, like if if this does last a year and they go, okay, it's going to cost us, you know, we've lost three, We've lost a billion dollars. You know, it's going to take us 10 years to recoup that in the parks. Is it worth it to them to invest the 10 years to do that? I mean, I know they have you know, so much time and money in those in those parks, but at a certain point, it's a business, right? And that's where I get scared. A good CEO will address the problems of today while designing the solutions of tomorrow that that quote deserves to be on the plaque i'm making um, a t-shirt yeah right now you know <laughs> it's a, <laughs> a spread shirt <laughs> the um 
man, you, you may as well shut down the company altogether because you're going to alienate so many, like, I think a lot of the appeal, I think it work. It's a two way street. A lot of the appeal with the parks is you get to, you know, experience some of the fantasy and the magic and all the other bullshit PR, you know, vocabulary that you have in the movies. And you also have those nostalgic characters and you have the sentiment and all of that. At the same time, you watch a lot of those movies because, well, because you're trying to capture that feeling of the parks at home. Yeah, I can vouch for that, man. When I moved here, I didn't watch a single Disney movie in theaters for about a year and a half because it feels like I wanted my Disney fix. I could just go down the street to Magic Kingdom. Yeah, it's like I feel like it would be if if you're going to do that, then you may as well just break it up into its individual, you know. Um, the Saul Steinberg into its, approach. In, yeah, into its individual parts. And I mean, but Six you're going to have a lot of it out. Jesus Christ. Shit. Six Flags can't afford it. They can't <laughs> afford to maintain their own part. Um, I mean, Cedar hell, I, sh- <laughs> Knott's probably has a better fucking bankroll than Six Flags. Apple. Apple's um, going to buy it. Right. I could yeah. see. I could actually see that. And for a while I was like, don't do that. But now it's like, you know what? We'll see what happens. Fuck it. Roll the dice. <laughs> Let's see what happens. If, if Apple was as creative as they were 15 years ago. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. But now it's just like, it's the new iPhone. It's the same iPhone as the old iPhone, but this one has three lenses. Ooh. <laughs> <It's>, it's, <laughs> we, we, gave you an, we gave you a home button again. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Bringing back the home button, the nostalgic home button. I still, I dude, I dropped my my phone the other day, and I refuse to get another one because I love the home button so much. The new ones have the home button. They do. The <gasps> ones that are rolling out, and and I'll get another one then. Ac- according to what Kylie told me, like it's not some thousand dollar ripoff item either. They've really lowered the prices. Maybe that's in response to COVID. I don't know. Um, but she was quoting prices to where like 256 gig was only like 650 or 700 really? or something. Yeah. Holy shit. I might have to go to Best Buy this week. It's a, I don't know if it's even out yet. I don't pay attention to my Apple emails. And so I got one the other today and I just scrolled right past it. All right, uh, let's wrap this doom and gloom episode up because it's late. When do you, <laughs> when do you, when do you see this all coming around? I've been saying for a while. I think June first is when they're going to just. I, I don't think, dude. I really think that most people are just going to go like, you know what? I'll I'll roll the dice. If I get it, I get it. But I'm not. This is no way to live, and whether they're right or wrong. But you know, I think they're like, there's. This is no way for me to live. I I have no life. You know, I, I want to get back to normal. And I think most businesses are going to be like, if we don't do something like this, isn't going to work. <laughs> so, well, yeah, I'm saying yep. June 1st. What is your prediction for normal? And I, by normal, I mean, I mean, like people being comfortable enough to go back out in public and 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 have some sort of semblance of, of normalcy in society. Not necessarily not wearing a mask and gloves. I think that's going to stick around for a while. But like a basic normal. When do you think we're getting back to that? Honestly, I don't mean to sound like a doomsday prepper. I think some of the moves that are taking place in other states are indeed premature. And as far as round one goes, I would say probably midsummer. Wow. But. I'm also going to say I do not disagree with the what the medical experts are saying, which is when that when that curve bounces back up, it's going to be worse than it was. I oh, think man. that the that the the same the same character traits that led this country 
through a couple of world wars no longer exist as, as, you know, commonalities amongst, you know, the population. And I think that, yeah, it's a dire situation, but I've said all along, everybody's going to, going to take a real serious hit in 2020. I think the only question now is whether that's going to be in this first bounce or this first curve, or if it's going to be in the second one. My only problem with all this stuff is, is twofold. I, I go like, yeah, listen to the medical experts, right? You know, they, they know what they're talking about, but they've been wrong on so much shit lately where I kind of go like, I, I kind of feel like it's the same thing whenever a hurricane hits Florida. Ever since I've lived here, every hurricane season, mm-hmm. it's the worst hurricane on record. You're going to get the worst hurricane you've ever seen, and then nothing happens. I remember a few weeks ago they were saying, this is the worst week we're going to see, and it was like the lowest week so far. Now, right. you can probably say that's because we're, we've been quarantining and, and, you know, and it's paying off. But like, if they keep moving the goalposts, I mean, I mean, like we're my my biggest thing is the economy. Like, there, you can't keep this up much longer. No, you can't. And, 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 and just and, and just just for things to function, thing like because if we get to a point where like we can't afford electricity, then the electricity company is not going to be able to afford to be able to keep the electricity on. Like, yeah, it's going to get to that point if we keep on where we're at and. You know where we're at. It's terrifying, but it this virus could be a lot worse. Here's the thing. I I agree with everything you just said. I think for me personally, it still goes back to mishandling it from the start. Well, yeah, when if, your president if, says if, the if, fucking thing's a hoax, when it's Dude, anytime China goes, hey, there's some shit happening, you probably should listen because they're yeah, right? they're the most suspect motherfuckers of all time. The Chinese government, they are the the absolute creepiest country that we have to worry about, and it's uh, it's it's crazy. I don't personally. I don't think we're going to see normal until 2021. Jesus Christ. What, whatever whatever lies between now and then, it's all, you know, it's all, well, everything is, you know, speculatory. Um, I think what it's going to take is politicians and our quote unquote leaders are giving in to those with the loudest screams on the steps. Mm-hmm. They, they tried to pussyfoot around. <clears throat> Again, because it's an election year. Um, and as a result of that, we did not do what needed to be done right out of the gate. And so here we are. Everybody's fed up. Everybody's been on lockdown. You know, California's uh, shit, man. They've been at it longer than we have here in Florida. Yeah, they were um, one of the first states. It was like them in Washington to like really shut shit down. Yeah. And. So it's like we've kind of exhausted everybody's willingness and patience. Yet if we had done it right, right from the start, instead of trying to please everybody all the time, just make a hard-nosed decision, look, and no, it's not about losing freedoms or liberties. It's about taking care of business. Mm -hmm. Um, If we had done that from the start, then we could be looking at the light at the end of of the tunnel. But we didn't. We were not on the same page. Every man for himself, every state doing their own thing. Nobody agreeing. A fucking buffoon with a freaking bad um, sun glow up in the White House. I call him you know, sweet potato Hitler. It's, it's like, so I think what it's going to take is giving in to these people. And then there's going to be a resurgence. There's going to be a lot more. Like, I believe that, yeah. This isn't over. Right when we started gaining some ground, we still didn't gain as much ground as we could have because we still didn't do it right the first time. And so maybe if they're just going to allow this shit to fucking hit the fan yet again, it opens up the path for them to be like, well, 
we all know now, even though we should have known from the start, that we have to be even more rigid. And because, like, we could be coming out of this if we had truly locked down the country, told international flights, eat a dick, told interstate travel, sorry, you know, mm-hmm. like, this is where we're at. This must be done. If we buckle down now, we can get out of it sooner. I, and still keep, still keep the borders closed after that until the rest of the world has figured their shit out, or you impose restrictions. Like I mean, we half-assed it, and so I think we got to go through it twice. And that's why oh, I say twenty twenty-one. That's terrifying because I think you're right. You're usually pretty right on this stuff. Like I remember, I remember thinking like, yeah, it's two weeks. It's not a big deal. And here we are a month later and everyone's, yeah, everyone's over it. Everyone's tired of it. I'm ready yep. to get back to and normal. I miss, I miss sitting down at a restaurant, like the small things, man. Like it's just, yeah. I miss the not having to have to go down one fucking way through a public aisle. I mean, I, yeah. don't, I ignore those signs. I don't give a fuck. I'm a rebel. I miss fresh vegetables. Because I'm not willing to buy produce because I'm not willing to go through the lengthy steps to try and ensure that I've sanitized it against Tom, Dick and Harry that have been picking out the best green bell pepper at Walmart, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, man. I feel you. Like, God, it, I mean, I mean, trust me, man, I'm stuck here with three teenagers Oh God damn it! I don't see how you do it. And 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 a wife who's never been well at being contained, you know. <laughs> like I am, and two of those are in middle school. Like you know, I what I do hate is the fact that like my oldest, she's a senior this year. Well, oh, my God. oldest, my my oldest are twins, so. These are the only these are the only children I will ever sow in this world. And like like yeah, we all know high school graduation, once you're past that, you know, benchmark, isn't that deep. You know, like God, looking back at it, I, I can give a shit less about my graduation. Yeah, but it's you not know. about you. It's about everyone else that got. It's about parents, man. It really is. I mean, like, cause I don't give a shit about my graduation either. But it meant the world to my family. So yeah. I, I know that's kind well, of the route, that, you're, route you're going on that. And I yeah, agree with exactly. you. It sucks, dude. Like, are they going to do it virtually? Like, how, uh, how are they email gonna, came, gonna, are they going to like mail email, out the diplomas? Like, that sucks. An email came out today from uh, <clears throat> Orange County Public Schools superintendent. And announcing that in June, they were going to do virtual graduations for all 20 high schools in Orange County. And maybe by late July, they will offer an in-person ceremony at the football stadiums for each of the schools for those who want to participate. But they also stressed, based on current situation and forecast, it's highly unlikely that that will happen. Hey, you want to do this thing that might not happen? That's so that sucks, man. <clears throat> so it's <sighs> like, and th- those are the moments when I'm like, you know what? If everybody could have just disciplined themselves, then perhaps as a self-contained nation, we might literally be on the brink of getting out of this. But nobody wanted to step up to the plate and lead this country. That's what it boils down to. Trump pushed out by leaving it up to the states. You can't have 50 different people coming up with their own plan and their own, the, uh, their own result that they're all trying to achieve when it's supposed to have a collective result and effect on in the big picture that's yeah. not how design works yeah like you can't have uh, 50 different people deciding what's best for the nation as a whole yes in this kind of yeah. scenario but the, like and, and i want to be clear i'm talking about in this specific like global pandemic scenario not like yeah. 
Yeah. Not like states' rights. That's not what I'm talking about. Because I, I know why that is the way it is. But, yep. like, you could have another, like, if if things, let's say we open up here next week, which I don't think, May 15th, is, is that, like, the floating date that we have, May 15th? I, d- I know that dine-in That's a month away, is through man. May 8th. I thought that our state stay-at-home was only through May 1st. May but 1st, the dine-in was, was oh, May God. 8th. But at the same time. I wanna, what, are, what are you going to do? Like, let's say May May 1st, this whole thing. Are you going to, are you still going to quarantine yourself or are you going to roll the dice? Um, For me and my family? Yeah. Uh, you will not catch us. If Magic Kingdom was to open tomorrow, I would not be there. Really? I'm going to the beach um, tomorrow, man, because I feel like I'm outside. I can social distance while I'm there. You know, it, you're not you're never that close to anybody well, on the beach anyway. Like you're in the sun, you're gonna I have I'm gonna have you know Yeah, get, we might do a up. beach. We might do a beach, but the last place we all went was a beach. Really? You know, when everybody else was at Disney World for the closing weekend, we were in Siesta Key. Yeah, I was you at know? Universal the day that they closed. And um we uh I would do that, but I would do it the same way that we did it before. Yeah. No public restrooms, no rest stops, straight there, straight back. I mean, literally, you got to piss, hit the ocean. Like, mm-hmm. because nobody's cleaning that shit, you know? <laughs> um, like, I don't know. I just, and I, I don't know how it is over in your part of town, over here, which... I mean, I'll just I'll just say we are in the Disney attractions area. Yeah. It is it is known and assumed that if you live over here, you have money. Uh that's not always the case. Nope, I can vouch for that. <laughs> um and the people but what I can say is those with money think that they can apparently buy their way out of this and you can't because when I go to a Koei, like Sam's Club, everybody's got their face masks, their gloves. Everybody is like, they're covering their ass in that regard. Yeah. I can go to the Publix across the street, and I will not see a single glove or face mask. That's nuts, man. So there's also, there's also, you know, a wide variance in mindsets within socioeconomic classes as well. And the people with the most to lose, financially speaking, material wise, seem to be, you know, they're the worst offenders. Yeah. And I don't like my neighbors anyway. I hate (laughs) everybody that I have to even share the road with on the daily. But ever since this all started, it's a good, that's exactly why I don't need a gun because in my old <laughs> cranky age, like Road rage is your gun, dude, if we had a purge, Oh my God, I'd be the fucking MVP man. <laughs> and I wouldn't even have to leave my zip code. That's just, <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. I'm thinking, but, I'm thinking June 1st is when we're going to kind of start to test and see how that, I think, I think, this May, whatever, if it's the first or the fifteenth, I think that's whatever that is is going to get extended, and I think we're looking. You know, at June from, first. from DeSantis' standpoint, I don't see him being a strong enough leader to impose it further than he has to. But at the same time, he also painted himself into a corner by shutting down schools for the remainder of the year. Yep, which we're going to run until June first. And you 1st can't anyway. undo that. I mean. Yeah, well, so. and so it's not safe for the schools to go back, but yet we can open the state. Yeah. It's kind of, he's, he's a walking contradiction at that point, yep. and that's why I think it would get extended. That makes total sense. I hadn't thought about it that way, but you're absolutely right. So. All right. I don't know, man. Well, but, let's but wrap that this. Second, that, that second bounce in the curve, that's why I question whether HHN will really be a thing or not. I'm hoping so, man. I want to do another horn with you three in a row, right? 
This would be the third. Oh, I'd love to think that life's back to normal by by the end of the summer. Can you believe though, if this does happen, this will be the third year in the in a row that we've hung out at Horror Nights. Three. It means I've known that, you three, what? that we've hung out at Horror Nights. This will be the third year in a row. Yeah. It means I've known you three years. How crazy is that? <laughs> known you three years. I'm surprised you haven't passed kicked a bucket yet. I'm surprised you made it through. Uh, uh, that's nuts, man. I think about like three years ago. How crazy. And here we are. Uh, two, two years. Three, three HHNs, two years, right? No. Is that how that works? I don't know. I'm too stupid. I'm also, <laughs> I'm also not sober right now, so there's that. <sighs> <laughs> Whereas I haven't had a... Actually, the last time I had a drink was when we were on the phone that night, and then I ended up calling my old uh, co-writing buddy in Cincinnati, and then I was up till 3 a.m., and then I was puking till 7, so <laughs> that was fun. Crown Apple, Crown Apple, right? What's that? Was it Crown Apple? Was that what it was? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> No I'm, I'm too old for that. Gross. That's All right, why guys. I intentionally just stuck to water. Oh, God. I, I, don't, I don't do flavored liquors that often. Especially whiskeys. It just doesn't go well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Lower Level Podcast. A little shorter than normal, but it's also 1.30 in the morning, so I'm ready to go upstairs <laughs> and go to sleep. Uh, my kids are here, so I have to like kind of somewhat be responsible. Um, Kevin, where can the good people find you on Twitter and Instagram? Uh, Twitter is uh, Kevin C's Lagoon, kind of like Seven C's, but use Kevin. And <laughs> then on Instagram, it's uh, Married to Chaos uh, with the number two, Married Number Two Chaos, uh, same as the uh, YouTube channel. So. YouTube yeah, kind of contradictory, isn't it? Check out the YouTube channel, man. Your YouTube videos are so good. You put so much effort into those videos. And people don't even know. People don't even know. They're going to find out, though. They're going to see. And people are watching this. Well, I haven't lately. No so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's been not, not, not much going on. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Jedi Talk Podcast over on Twitter and Instagram. I don't really use Instagram, so there's that. Um, but YouTube.com slash Park Views with Brad Hughes. And... Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. I can't wait to get you back and have it in person because it's just, it just, it's just better in person. It's more natural. It is. It's just like this weird delay that's going on. It's it's terrible, but uh, I cannot thank you enough for coming on, especially so late. Um, you're the man. I love you, dude. Yeah, man. Love you too, brother. Take it easy. Be safe during the quarantine. And uh, until next time, we'll see you guys on the next show. <laughs>